Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to the Infinite Library. I am Shotgun Shogun and I don't know what episode this is because I didn't think about <laughs> that before I started hitting record. But I am joined today with King Blair Shuffles and Vinny. Uh, very happy to have everybody here today. We've got some interesting questions, not a ton of RTA related stuff, um, a little bit of RTA, but I mean, we really spin everything into RTA anyways most of the time but i am going to let everybody go ahead and introduce themselves king blair let people know uh you know what you do all right so what's up summoners king blair here uh so i'm a epic seven youtuber i do a lot of videos primarily on youtube and i also stream on youtube i know we got a lot of streamers here from twitch uh, but if you ever feel like going to youtube to watch a stream that's what i do i primarily do a lot of rta content and some fun videos like making ranger specialty drink go live all right fantastic uh and it is also good to have some stream representation over on youtube as well since a lot of us do like you said stream on twitch and speaking of the person that i'm sure everybody and their mom has seen if they've ever glanced at epic seven uh at pretty much any time of the day uh well in the evening on twitch or has ever hit rta because i'm pretty sure that shuffles does not stop rt uh, even in his sleep and i've mentioned this before that i anytime i would queue up uh, especially season one uh shuffles was there it could be three in the morning it could be two in the afternoon you're gonna go up against shuffles at some point but for those who don't know you shuffles go ahead and introduce yourself uh hey everybody i stream on twitch uh twitch.tv slash five finger shuffle uh, i also make some youtube content although i kind of slack off a little bit on that and i do the occasional rta fight um as shogun said but that's about it i guess occasional shuffles just curious how many matches did you have last season like um, total? i actually had a lot less last season but i think i had eight thousand season one eight thousand that's insane <laughs> Yeah, I did a lot. Oh season. my goodness. That is crazy. Like I said, in like season one, there wasn't a time where I would queue up. I didn't think that I was just going to go up against you at some point. Yeah. Um, well, because it yeah. was always either I was either on stream and we were screwing around, or I was trying to get my points back from all the screwing <laughs> around off the screen. Around. So I had to get my points back. Uh, yeah. Um, but then season two, I think I, only, I did half that. I did like 4,000 last season. That's still insane amounts of games uh yeah. but well, it's mostly on stream yeah we're gonna do we're gonna go vinny then we're gonna hop into questions we could talk about uh, rta like i said we could go off topic and talk about rta forever but vinny for those of you those of uh the people out here who don't know you this is the real vinny by the way um go ahead and introduce yourself <laughs> Yo, what's up? Um, I'm apparently the real Vinny. I know there's been a multitude of other Vinnies hopping on streams all the time, but I'm the original Unicid Cleaver in Season 1, I would like to say. I was the only one doing it, and um, I'm just hyped to talk about the game. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice having you on, Vinny. Uh, Vinny is our non-streamer representative that we that we have on this time, and we're I think we're three for three with uh, people who have phenomenal voices. Careless ASMR, Light ASMR, Vinny ASMR. This is going to be the start of his commentating career right here. Um, I, I think it's just I pick people who have, you know, who have phenomenal voices. But uh, we are going to go into our first question um, so we can get into the meat of it again. Thank you guys all for, you know, joining me in on this. But Mort just came out. First off, I hate that his name is Mort. Um, he has such a... Call him Morty? We could, we could call him Morty. We'll call him Morty. But I mean, Mortelix is such a badass name and he's just like you can call me mort and i'm like how about i don't how about we don't call you that because that that name sucks but um i i pulled him i have him double s i put him in gear um 
I'm really enjoying him. Uh, Shuffles, I know you were playing around with him last night. Vinny, you were talking about messing around with him. Uh, King Blair, have you pulled him? And what are your first impressions so far? I know it's a little early to really yeah. hammer everything out, but let me know what you think. Yeah, so I, I did pull for him. I ended up pulling for him. I just like to collect all of them. I did actually get to fight a member of, of the Discord in that has a triple S and like super nice gear. We just like labbed it out for like hours. And honestly, he just felt okay. And it almost felt like it was too late when he, when he came in. I know that's something that people have been saying, but it's just like he's supposed to counter like tank teams, right? And like healers like Rella Light and uh, injure that HP. Then you have units like Landy that can do the same thing, but also at the CR push and also do like the defense penetration, and just like constant cycling. So right now he feels like he's good, but not like what I was expecting. He okay. just felt like okay. All right, Shuffles. What was your uh, what was your opinion on the testing that you did yesterday? Uh, that was kind of the first thing I thought even before we summoned him when we saw when we saw his kit was he's too late. Uh, he was great against. He would have been great against the quad tank Ruel type comps. Um, now I put him closer to where Chu is, and I really enjoy using Chu. Um, if, I'm sure I've probably used her against a lot of you in the past, um, but I kind of put her as like the nature version of her, where she's just okay. a bruiser. Yeah. The you know, she does it. He does his thing. He's got a defense break, which is really nice. I think that's actually probably the best part of his kit. He'll be good. I think anti cleave, you'll be able to use him. Uh, the testing last night went really poorly because okay. I we used him for five fights. We lost all five, and then we went against him twice and we won both against him. But I think part of that is just learning new units and finding where he's optimal. I think you can't force him in. He's going to be niche, but where he's good, like if you're using him against Cleave or if you're using him against, like, you need a nature unit because you're going against, like, Spectre and SSB. Yeah. And you just need a nature AoE, he'll be good in that spot, but you won't be able to pick him in, like, every single fight. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely agree with you. And I'll, you know, jump in here after Vinny tells me uh, what he thinks about Mortelix. Honestly, completely unbiased. Outside of RTA, I think he's one of the most badass units to have ever been released. Let's be real. <laughs> that's my that's my dragon bro right there. But um, <laughs> just <laughs> like honest feelings, man. Like I pulled from the moment I saw that he was going to be a unit. Like I was committing. I was like, I need this man in my life. Is it because he but... explodes his clothes off? Whoa, whoa! Don't be exposing me on your stream. I mean, like that, you man. know what? Hey, I'll I'll be real. <laughs> like when I first saw the S three, where he just like explodes his clothes off and then turns into a dragon. I'm like, this guy could have the worst kit in the entire game, and I'm still pulling for that because that is that is a plus um but you said non-biased outside that animation, of his kit right? like that animation stole yeah. me instantly i was like oh my god like give me more yo even but his s1 animation more. right is still pretty sweet like the way he just like rolls over and just like you know does his little spear thing it's super it's yeah like super that little good. flourish with the spear oh my god like oh, yeah. animations were top tier like there was no way i wasn't gonna pull for him and then in my exp experimentation in like RTA and whatnot, I think he's just like, I, I agree with everybody else. I think he's a season too late. I think, you know, you pop him into a tank team and you last until frenzy, you know, like seven even. And then he starts defense, breaking, he starts doing damage. He's injured you a couple of times. Right. You know, he fits a very slow moving meta. But with like the release of Landy and like other quick units that have kind of, you know, made tanking down a little bit more of a suboptimal option. Mort doesn't really have a niche in the current meta. But I still like him a lot. I think, you know, you can have the gear to run him well, but if you have the gear to run him well, you can probably put it on another unit. Right. So it's like what we were talking about before the podcast with ML Ken. Like, sure, you right. can build, like, the most amazing one that will do what he's supposed to do, but why not just put that on 
somebody else right um i feel like like you guys said he's a little too late on what it is that he is supposed to do like counter that you know ruel and friends um but here's here's my question and this kind of goes a little off the topic of that but um usually i feel like lower tier rta not like you know top 100 legend are about a half a season behind do you think that because of that he may see some play in lower tier like maybe like mid champ or lower uh where people may be picking up the ruel and friends uh meta going into maybe the next season do you think that or do you think that they're just going to immediately sl- switch into this more like faster aggro like high tempo aggro rta that we're going to be seeing this season and um go ahead that? shuffles yeah go ahead um honestly i think the problem is because people in that range tend to be very responsive to like looking at what people are saying about units mm-hmm. i think they just they probably could and they could probably use them very successfully but I don't think they'll invest in him to get to that level at that point. You know what I mean? Like, they'll just skip him and not right. necessarily invest in him fully and then not use him when he's useful. And then he won't be useful, and then they'll complain about him. So what you're saying <laughs> is, like, like Reddit, Facebook, and every other community oh, about three months yeah. after every new unit comes out, right? Yeah. I think it'll be too late once they eventually get around to building him, which right. sucks because you're probably right. Like, he would probably be amazing in those tier levels because there's a lot of Ruel and friends still going yeah. on in yeah. those levels. Because um, um, people there can't counter it yet. It's yeah. similar to how, like, Masters can't, it has really struggles against Cleave. Um, yeah. They have, can't figure out how to counter Cleave when in, in most levels higher, it's like the easiest thing to counter. Yeah, which I, because I, you know, I, I see people a lot of times that are like, yo, it's just cleaving. I can't, uh, I get cleaved so much. This unit's OP. And I'm like, have you seen Arius and Adamant? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I get asked on a daily basis how to counter cleave every single day. Just tank it, just literally, literally tank it down and, uh, you know, just go from there. Uh, And then once you start tanking it down, that's when you become a Ruel and friends, right? Can't outspeed them, just take them to Frenzy 20 and they can't do anything. But um, I do completely agree with you that for, you know, the higher tier competitive people, had this been out probably like, early last season even mid last season um he would have been you know 100 percent meta unit easy um i think that it's pre-Lulu. still uh, yeah yeah pre pre lulu because i mean she came in and became just disgustingly meta and ridiculous um but you know what it feels like go ahead what I, it feels like they saw the meta being Ruel and friends. Mm-hmm. They they made his kit, and then they changed frenzy, but then still released his kit yeah. anyway. You know what yeah. I mean? Like they kind of they kind of made it in response to it, but then they decided to go another direction and just didn't bother changing his kit. That's what it was. Right. Like. Yeah. No, I com- I completely agree with you there because I mean, um, you know, and that's something that we talked about a little bit in the last podcast was the frenzy changes and how that that is going to make games have to go faster. Now, it's not going to change yeah. Cleave at all because Cleave doesn't benefit from frenzy changes. But I mean, when you get to like frenzy five, it's like what an extra 100 percent effectiveness like. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's nothing better than made stunning Ruel over and over yeah. and over again. <laughs> yeah, I was going to mention about his S1. That is like one of the things that I really do like is that when he has his fury, his vigor, whatever up, um, the unresistible S1 uh, is yeah, is really is huge. Nutty. That's really nice. It yeah. also hits yeah. somewhat hard. I mine isn't yes. skilled up, but I have noticed his S1 actually has some decent damage to it. Yeah, so I plus 14 him last night uh, and put him on some pretty okay gear because I, like Vinny, as soon as I saw him aesthetically, I was like, yo, 
this guy right here is I'm going to make this dude work because I want to draft him <laughs> on my team. Um, and I think like if you use him with like an Elbrus or use him with, let's say like an Aeros or something like that, and you're able to pull him in, even a Lilius, you start pulling him in and you start getting those two turn unresistible uh, defense breaks. Like the fact that it's two turns is so huge. huge versus like an Alencia, right? You have to soul burn for the two turns. Then you have the 15%. Then you have, you know, all that stuff. Sure. It's a hundred percent chance. Uh, but I mean, if you're getting those double attacks, you're getting the counter attacks, you're getting the Elbrus, like that just opens you up to blow them up right afterwards. Um, and I think that yep. Again, Sorry. no, no, you're fine. I actually, my, I stopped there for a second because I had to remember what I was going to talk about. But I think that that, if you can cycle him very fast and you can get those defense breaks, will allow you to play a bit more of an aggressive, like high tempo more. Um, and you were right. Like the S1 hits pretty hard. The S3, I don't even care about the injury. Like the injury, I literally, yeah, whatever, you know, it could be completely taken off of there and I really don't care. But like last night in Guild Wars, I, I hit a Steny for like almost like three quarters of her health with like a soul burned, uh, Mort S3. And I was like, I was like, oh, okay, I almost just killed that. Now, I'm sure it wasn't, you know, a legend tier, like, iconic tank Steny, but, you know, um, still does respectable damage. And, um, you know, the speed buff that he gives himself helps with his cycling, stuff along those lines. But I do think that it's going to take a little bit of time. And plus, everybody's waiting for Wonderland Tenebria information. So I've been telling people, hey, wait until Wednesday before you decide on whether or not you want to pull with your with your heart. I with, do think people yeah. are realizing how strong speed buff is now that Landy has been out for a bit. So I think the speed buff on him, the speed buff on Crow are big. My problem with his defense break, even though it's guaranteed, is it's the most the skill that re 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 relies most on different conditions, right? He needs to first yeah. of all proc his rage thing, and then he has to proc his defense break, and it's like you're asking a lot. And then he also has to hit a unit that doesn't have immunity, or you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's so many ifs in order for it to work. That's what kind of pulls me away from it a little bit but i do think right. he will be used and i know i'll be using him for sure uh i think he has a role he's gonna be probably underrated though yeah yeah no for I sure thing about mort like in my opinion i think mort has a very complete kit like he's immune to some of the most key debuffs in the game which are stun and sleep you know he's got a good aoe attack and he's got a really solid s1 the th only thing i would have a gripe with is really his passive and it's like the increased critical hit resistance, it's just, it's yeah. too passive. Yeah. And it's it doesn't passive. fit well with the rest of his kit. Because if you think about it, right? Injury, what's that for? That's to like reduce someone's HP over time, the more times you hit it, right? And you have the S1, which is a defense break. Both of these are really hyper aggressive. And then you have this passive, and it's like, why am I, I pulling like up an anti crit? crit? Yeah, and the other thing, it's anti crit is one turn too, so it's not even, and it's a forty percent chance to even proc. Exactly. Yeah, I think the big thing though on it is the is the speed buff. Um, yeah. Again, I've I've never put my faith in anti crit because you just the minute that you stop worrying right. about anti crit is the minute that you don't mold as much. You just assume everybody <laughs> right. has ninety nine point five percent crit anyways because um, it's always a 50-50, but um, shuffles. To answer your question about speed buff, I think that people still don't realize how important speed buff is. They just go, Landy does big damage. Landy's the best thing in the game. I love Landy now. Landy was garbage oh. before, but now she does big damage, and I think they completely forget that she has speed buff, right? I don't even care about her damage, honestly. Uh, I I use her for the speed buff for the most part on turn one, and it lets me completely lap their team and take two full rotations on first turn. Yeah. And if I get two full yeah. rotations on first turn, you're not living. Like, right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you killed me first. 
but yeah, yeah. you can you can take first four turns. I'm going to take the next eight turns. I'm probably going to win. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, it's it's one of the reasons why I like um, I personally like running Captain Rickers uh, because of speed buff, because of cooldown turns. Uh, I wish he just had a bit better in the way of you know not three star stats, uh, or I would use him exponentially more. I still use him quite a bit, but um, speed buff is real huge. That's why characters like Mursa, uh, people who get like Crow, you'll just lap. That's why Justice for All, when you get a speed buff on Falconer Quarry off of the Justice for All, you just zoom. You take like seven turns before they get even one turn. So um, that's also why Tywin is so busted it's because he is slow speed yeah. down dude speed yeah, down it, it, yeah slow, it's dude. ridiculous it. yeah yeah no for I sure you think that's duty balance OG speed buffer though Where if you were in control would you balance it if I were in control uh would you, would you like make it 30% instead of 50% for speed up and down um no or because you... I think that they're they're rare enough that when they show up like you you don't there's not too many people that put speed down right um usually it's control uh and it can still be resisted i think that speed up is also kind of niche and you have to bring a specific person in order to do that i think that characters like ml crow kind of need it in order to to cycle um so I would, I would probably, I like, I like them the way that they are, at the moment. Yeah. yeah. I was just curious personally because I think I think slow is like busted, like it's debilitating. It, it okay. very I much mean, is, but it's still yeah. it's still beholden to the fifteen percent. Yeah. And anything. That's another one that I would probably change. Is I mean, the 15%. Yeah, I hate. Per- I hate. The if you're gonna have fifteen percent one way, why uh, do you not have fifteen percent chance to land? That's you can that guarantee is true. Res, yeah. but you can't guarantee landing. That it should be either one or the other. Either yeah. let us guarantee it or let us have fifteen percent. Don't go both ways. Like kind of like that is know. yeah yeah no that's true because I mean uh, but I, I also feel like at the same time like it's easier to stack effectiveness and still be okay than it is to you know stack three hundred effect resist. But yeah. we. We let's get back to let's get back Sorry. to more. We're gonna go. We could go. Like I said, we can go down this like these <laughs> off-topic uh, rabbit holes in general. But um, I think that Mort being released right now before potentially, you know, a, I don't think a Cerise reruns coming anytime soon. Uh, it'll probably be you know spring before we get that. But uh, potentially a DN. Um, Wonderland, Tenabria, who knows what else after that. Um, I think that he is going to potentially suffer from like a Mui syndrome, where Mui is not the worst unit. Um, King Boyer just left us. Um, come oh. back. Okay. All right. He's back. Um, but I think that the timing of his release, right, is going to have a lot of people just being like, I'm not. I'm not rolling for this because I have to save all of my bookmarks for yet another Tenebria. Um, you know, and then people are going to be like, oh, hey, we're getting we're getting uh, Arc Demon Mercedes and Straws because they mentioned it one time in like uh, the Q&A for the two year. And there's that tournament. So we're getting those next week. Absolutely. Right. Um, so I think that he's going to suffer a little bit from that, too. But plus I, Olympia yeah. rerun plus potential Cerise rerun. Like... Right. There's right. a lot of things. Well, I know People we're not getting already Valencia. Valencia. Yeah, I know we're not getting Alencia until next year. So that's already off the table because they've already specifically stated that we're not getting it until next year. So yeah. could well, potentially be. I mean, that's that's <laughs> true, you know, um, but uh, we'll I mean, it, it is tough, right? Uh, not only that, yeah. but. Alencia does do a lot of other stuff, the defense buff, the strip, uh, things like that. So, you know, really big. Um, but I do think that because he's not limited, um, I think it's it's fine. Uh, people may pick him up later on. I know I'm super excited to test him more and see uh, what I can do just because I want to give my dragon daddy some uh, 
some love, but we're gonna move on to the next question. And this is the GNU Guild Wars artifact and future predictions on the Guild Wars artifacts. Now, uh, oh my God. <laughs> so nice. Vinny right now dude, is just like oh. is so good. Yeah. <laughs> dude. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. It's it, it is. <laughs> it really is. And um one of the things that I like about this, now people are like, oh, but they power creep two three star artifacts. Man, King Blair just keeps coming in and out of this call. Uh <laughs> but um I think that this artifact is phenomenal um i think that they did it really well the fact that obviously it's going to be you know it's it's a limited in the amount of artifacts that you can get kind of like first proof eventually you know maybe we'll see multiples come out but i think that they really made up for the victorious flag which is not great not uh, very i'm using that artifact i like it are you on what <laughs> well, uh, what on your Euphine. Yeah. In the Akali one that someone's using it on Akali to snipe pilots in RTA. I thought but it's it, like one of the wait, I oh, see. Are you talking about the new Guild War artifact or the flag? Because I mean, if they're using the flag, oh, then, right, right. then that doesn't work. Oh, no. I'm talking the new one. Yeah. For, no, uh, the flag. <laughs> I was say, oh, yeah, if I'm somebody had a video <laughs> where they're like, yo, new tech, victorious flag <laughs> on Akali to rock Rylets, I would be like, oh, no. what? Heck, wait, yeah. that doesn't that doesn't work. But <laughs> hey, you know, you're one in one in however many chances here. But um no, I think that like them taking um uh, good three star artifacts and just slamming them together and putting them out for you know Guild Wars rewards is really good. Um but I wish I would have saved more currency. Go ahead, Blair. What is, uh, uh, I mean, tell me what you think about it. Like, what else, also, what other three stars would you want slammed yeah. together for next season? Yeah. So I think that I actually really like the new artifact because, like, one of the things is, like, I hate playing Cleave because it just feels like when I play, like, Cleave, I'm like, oh man, I wish my Cleaver had Oath Key, but then she doesn't do enough damage. And then I'm just like sitting there, like, I have to switch back and forth whenever I, I want to Cleave something in arena so i think it's really nice and also i just don't like the art on most of the three star artifacts um so that's one of the things that i'm like i like that we're facing it out and getting those like higher statted five star artifacts to replace those three stars but the biggest thing the one i really want to see and i think would be cool i just don't know what i would mix it with would be something like daydream joker because that's so used by like everyone yeah in pve so maybe having like a daydream joker mixed with like Something else that could help you, like maybe like the ones that they released for Christmas, that's the extra 5% to the whole team. It gives oh. like extra effectiveness. Having yeah. like extra effectiveness for, for plus the Daydream Joker make like one shot so much easier for like biking one shots. Took, and if they them. took Card of Small Miracles for the attack yeah. buff and then slammed it together with Daydream Joker, but then people would complain that a Guild Wars artifact does not do anything for for their guild pv wars. for their guild wars or their pvp uh but at the True. same time i i completely agree with you uh shuffles what's your take on that and what would you like to see um new artifact is amazing uh, obviously i think everyone can agree with that i run my cleave a lot i i'm all for oath key i run it on like three different units already the downfall is the it's going to be six months before I can use the new artifact because you can only buy one a month. Right. So because I bought flag and I because I used flag, I can't use the new artifact for a good half year now, which is going to suck. But um, the only thing I think they missed an opportunity. If I wanted to be like kind of play devil's advocate, they missed an opportunity to indirectly buff Isaria by not making the artifact thirty percent against evasion. I realize most things are only 20%, but mm -hmm. if you would have made it 30%, you could have fixed Isaria without oh, buffing yeah. her. No, I mean, you could have yeah. given her a 100% chance to land. Yeah. yeah. And it would have helped you against, like, maybe Fat Cat and Arby combos or something. Like, you don't see a lot of that anymore, but you no. could still use it to, like, increase your chances against higher evasion stuff. You could use it against Rylet, who's 70%. You could use it against Mursa. Yeah. Like, you could have that little bit higher percent. I just think they missed that opportunity. That being said, it's still amazing, and I love it. So, yeah. But 
I thought it was probably the one thing I would have considered doing because you know how much they apparently hate buffing and nerfing ML5. So right, yeah, right. Uh, would have been an opportunity to fix her anyway. Yeah, but what two three stars would you see sandwiched together for the next season? That's tough. I don't know because realistically, like if it's PVE, are you gonna buy it? Are you gonna, now, especially now, if they're gonna do that every season? Yeah. If it's PVE, I'm not. I'm not wasting my resources on it. Because what if they come out with another PVP one and I can't buy it for another six months? That's true. That is that I'll, is true. I don't know. I like the idea that uh, with the Daydream Joker, if you were gonna buy it, but yeah. it's getting expensive to keep up. I haven't cleared out all the proof of valors either. So yeah, one hundred percent. Vinny, go for it. I know as soon as I mentioned it, you had like yeah. a a little bit of a, a moment over there. So hopefully you've Dude, calmed that, down a bit. Yo. <laughs> that new artifact is so good. Like Oath Key and Portrait in one, in one artifact without the constraint of being, you know, you have to be over 50% HP is huge yeah. for any cleaver, right? Yeah. And the thing is, it's like, I think, I think they're setting, you know, they're setting a really good direction for like Guild War artifacts being useful, not only in Guild Wars, but also like mm -hmm. making splashes in RTA, which I think is the ultimate end game. You know, it's like you kind of build all your units towards that goal, in right. my opinion. And having these like double three star artifacts into one five star artifact is a really great way to do it. And I've been like dreaming of the day where like, you know, you could like something that I wanted in the beginning of the game is like, what if you like can forge artifacts as well? Like you combine random things and you get a mixture of like random effects, you know, it's like, yo, that would be sick. And now, and now they're, <laughs> now they're doing it. Right. right. And I'm like, dude, it's also free. great. Yeah. Right. It's also free. And I'm like, yeah. you don't would, have to if I saw this on a banner, I would be pulling for it. Oh, you know? 100%. Like, yeah. Dude. If that was on a, if that yeah. was a limited artifact on a banner at 100%. I would probably complain right. about it if it was. <laughs> no, seriously, though. Like, can you make something that strong that pay to win? Yeah. Because for exactly. cause trying to yeah. pull like six or seven of those on a banner is unrealistic for ninety nine percent of the game. Right. So if it yeah. was a pay to win banner, like if it was sorry, if it was a limited banner, mm -hmm. that's totally not fair to the rest of the community. So yeah, I think I love yeah. that it's a free to play artifact. People were waiting when awesome. they released Rylet. They were waiting for like a limited or you know a, a new five star oath key that would counter yeah. him. Um, you know, to basically make the problem, then sell the solution. But I do think that them putting it into the uh, into Guild Wars is pretty solid. But Vinny, if you could say, if you could smash two together, what would it be? I've got like multiple combinations. I want. I would do like honestly, like prophetic candlestick and butterfly mandolin, cooldown into a potential extra turn. It's freaking nutty. That would be and then there's more crazy. Dude, like you just cool down and then pop an extra turn and then your S3's back up. Like, yo, <laughs> sign me yeah. up. And, like, there's there's things like Labyrinth Cube plus Ranon's Memorandum where like, oh my god, that would be so good. Speed, yeah. Not only you're getting speed, you're getting like you're getting that um, CR boost as well. It's like so many three star artifacts are really really good. It's just the stats that they give are so. You well. know, you know what I yeah. want. So here's what I want: Timeless Anchor. Plus Grail of Blood. Oh, Ooh. that would be spicy. Imagine that on like any like on a, like a Ravi or something like that. So not only are you healing, be... not only are you healing on the beginning of like every turn, but you have a timeless anchor on. It would be it would be so ridiculously good. Um, Dude, yeah. I thought you were going to say. I thought you were going to say timeless and crimson seed. So like oh. either way, <laughs> I'm I mean, dispelling something. Well, the Crimson Seed's not a three star. We got to do three stars. I mean, what about what about uh, timeless anchor? Timeless anchor memorandum. So you're just going faster, and you're uh, unable to, you know, for the most part, be locked down. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like I like a three memorandum. Star Hellcutter. Uh, I think so. I mean, I I I don't know offhand on that one, but. That would be pretty, pretty pog too. Um, but 
I think the one thing people ignore. It, sorry, I'm no, like, go ahead. Cutting you off here, but is the base stats. You did mention it yep. a couple of times, but I think a lot of people that don't necessarily think about it as much, they forget that you're getting a significant amount of base stats from plus thirty artifacts. So mm-hmm. if you're using oh, three yeah. stars, oh, yeah. that's great. But if you're using like a plus fifteen five star artifact versus a plus thirty five star artifact. That's a huge yeah. amount of extra damage on somebody yeah. like a Ravi with Scythe, for example. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Like I wasn't using Ravi on Scythe because I only had a plus 15 Scythe for her. Because I just wanted... I was losing so much attack by not having it. So being able to have an artifact like this new Guild War one that you're going to be able to plus 30 and have the bonus attack on it and have the max evasion is... That's going to be huge. It's going to do so much damage at max level. Oh yeah. yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, and that is too. I, I think just found you know, the most broken combination. Sorry, what? I keep on cutting. I just found the most broken combination of artifacts defensively. Right. Are you guys familiar with Forest Totem? Yeah, the one that gives you yeah. continuous healing. At max. Yeah, continuous healing when attacked plus Grail of Blood. So you get attacked, you heal continuously, and then once you get your turn, you're still healing. Oh my god. That's 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 a lot of healing. <laughs> that's a lot of healing. And yeah. then you're just permanently healing every time you move and every time you get hit. Oh my just god. being a Ravi. <laughs> Literally <laughs> being a Ravi. Yeah. Except all your units are now a Ravi. Now all of your units are a Ravi. We're going back to the stall. We're going back to the he- we're going to the heal meta where Basar and uh ssb take over well ssb is always going to be in the meta right but unbuffable is is the way to go but i do think that they absolutely nailed it with this um with this guild war artifact and the other thing too is it gives me it gives me something to work towards right um i think that that's like one of the big problems that sometimes i'm just kind of like you know when victoria's flag was a thing yeah i really didn't care that much so i was just kind of like eh you know, whatever, I'm going to buy this catalyst thing with my points instead of, you know, this other one, um, which is maybe why I don't have a maxed out new artifact because I didn't think ahead. But uh, that aside, you know, I do think that that is good and I hope that they continue that um, moving forward. Uh, But uh, speaking of, we talked about this earlier, uh, Straws, and arc demon mercedes oh, okay. um now oh. i have had to answer uh this question about 400 times in the past like week uh on the kr versus global tournament this weekend um on whether or not the winning team is the unit that is going to be released. And I told everybody that, well, one, it's not like they're going to tell me in the first place. And two, (laughs) I wouldn't be able to tell you guys in the first place if that was the case. Like, you know, like, oh, yeah, hey, guys, this is if if I lose, you get straws and people would be like, hey, can I pay you to lose? And I'd be like, I'll (laughs) lose for free, boys. Easy. First round exit. But um, they did say at the two-year anniversary q a um that they wanted to implement these characters these are probably some of the most asked for characters i've been asking for arc demon mercedes for ages you know thought maybe it would be a skin at some point who knows but one of their big things was that it would be hard to implement these because of imprints and things like that um so they were considering how best to do that now everybody's like you know oh man straws is coming boys straws is coming uh you save all your bookmarks forever straws straws is right around the corner he's gonna be an ml now and you know it never came right now how do you think that they will implement this so that people can get this character as well as imprints for said character king blair what's your take on it right, also so who I, do you want I first actually, yeah so i actually have a, a spicy take on this one i something that i don't see them doing but i think would be really really cool but it'd be something that like you know how we have the new daggers of car missions and you kind of have to complete quests yep so i'm wondering they give the unit for like for free and you have to complete quests to get the skill ups and to get all the different things so it's like a unit you get to like work on essentially like maybe you can di- try different quests for different things, or maybe it's like if you want to increase their imprints, you're like clear this stage of this thing with that unit, 
and if you do it, then you get like the skill up or something. Yeah, like, I, I would, think that would be I really would like cool. that. That would be a yeah. really interesting way uh, to do that. The only problem is that people who have been playing the game for three weeks would make really angry Facebook posts about how oh, it's yeah. absolute garbage that the game is so pay to win that they can't get that kind of like when Dagger Sakar came out. It's like it's a free it's a free hero, you know? It's like at worst it's like you have a six star hero that's like awakened and at best you have like a cool unit. And I gotta go with my girl Mercedes. I Mercedes. Since I got in the game, I've just been like this unit looks gorgeous. I just want her right now. Yeah. And it made me so sad when I found out she's not a playable hero. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I mean, I thought that when they put her in the game for the Hall of Trials stuff and like the the big uh, data mine came out and they're like, yo, our Demon Mercedes thing is in the game. And I'm like, yo, skin time. And it was like right around Halloween too. Uh, I was super hype. And then they're just like, nope. Uh, but Shuffles, what about you? Um, <laughs> we could de- I definitely would pick Mercedes as well if I could pick one of them. Uh she's i mean the artwork is incredible um and of course you know waifu how how can you turn that down um in terms of implementing it's i don't know man there's so many <clears throat> there's so many ways they could implement it i love that idea of putting her as like a mi- putting him or her as a mission mm-hmm. uh, i think that would be a lot of fun but i think they'd have to, like you were saying i think the missions would have to be somewhat easier um so that it would be obtainable cuz things like whatever the amount is for like hall of trials, like getting like 8 million on hall of trials is not obtainable to a lot of people. Right. Uh, which like, I mean, I get it, but you don't want it to be only for really late game players. Right. Uh, I feel like the, also... the problem with that shuffles is if you don't make it for late game players, then you have to make the unit very, underwhelming right uh because like if everybody has it and it's like you know a busted op character um you know and it's easy to obtain then that would be a little tougher i guess from like a dev standpoint um I mean, they make less money but yeah. if it's think about it the other way okay? what if only the top whatever 50 players in the game have it then all of a sudden those 50 players have separated themselves from the field it's true. Even more than they already have. Is that what you want? Because ideally you should be doing it the other way and be helping the earlier players catch up. Because if the earlier players feel separated, they won't start the game. I think overall it's probably bad for the long-term success of the game, even though the whales would be happy about it. Right. And like the late game players would be happy about it. I think in terms of the long-term success of the game, it might not be a good idea. So um, something kind of like um, um, the Free Spirit Tyria, right? uh where they're just like oh here is this unit it's 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 not the worst unit in the game right but you weren't gonna mulligore it at all but then they're like here it is plus early game she was fantastic because you got a free four star yeah Uh, and like something you didn't already have and it was skilled up probably amazing early game right like on a new account i mean yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and so I I see where you're coming from, and I, I definitely understand that. Uh, even if it's, like, let's say not, like, the most absolute meta unit in the game, um, as long as it's strong and can be a staple character, uh, that would be, you know, very good. Now, I don't think that, like, you should just be able to, you know, play for a week and get it, but maybe, like... No. Um, I'll give you an original idea. Okay. Uh, put it in at the end of chapter three. The chapter th- uh, ten or board ten ten chapter three. There, your reward instead of being transmit stones is that unit. Then yeah. everybody can get her. You can, yeah. and you don't, she doesn't have to be OP. But like, you're giving us transmit stones anyway. Right. Just do it. Like, and then maybe in the future boards or in the earlier boards, you can buy imprints for her with the AP achievements or something. Yeah. Um, Because no, like, is anyone doing those AP achievements? They overhauled the whole thing. I mean, for chapter three, and I haven't even done it yet. 
I, like I, I completed do them the words, but I haven't done the just to, uh, I do them just to get it out of the way usually, or I need to walk some dogs and we have like a puzzle side story. Uh, right. But yeah, I mean, most people don't. Right. Uh, I also think that that wouldn't be too bad because like getting through the newest parts of the story are are actually kind of tough. Right. Yeah, you can't just you can't just dog walker and yeah. like. <laughs> You know, one dog walker and three fodder, like at most things, right? Uh, Got to play like a little bit. So having that reward would be pretty good. Uh, but before I put in my opinions, Vinny, go ahead. Dude, I... Oh, here's the thing. I'm team Mer Archdemon Mercedes only because I don't like how they adjusted the design of Straz for um, episode two. Like the Fire Knight Strauss that you encounter in the Labyrinth, that's yeah. my guy. All right. That's my guy. Like that's the guy I want to be released. The the dark emo Strauss, I that's not my guy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was just thinking about like the things that other people said in terms of like, implementation. And I think, why don't we bring it back to the very beginning? You know, like, do you guys remember the connections? Yeah. Whatever happened with those. <laughs> Yeah, she could be a new connection. Whatever hero, happened like with Yuna. connection missions, you know, it's like units like Yuna who are who are great early on and who still have usage. You know, like, well, maybe not as much usage, but like she could still be used at a very high level if you invested in. Her. Like, I mean, Asian Alpha them, like, dude uses you know. Yuna, right? Yeah, and like that worked for him. You know, like why don't they make them a new connection mission? You know, and then. Everybody has access and has the option of getting these units if they right. want them, right? Yep. And then that way they can implement like a future event where you are you're able to get duplicates or imprints for them, you know? Because Yuna had her own event and right. a, an entire side story dedicated to her, you know? And that's how we got her imprinted. Yeah. I don't see why they couldn't do it for like Archdemon Mercedes or Straza, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, one of the things I thought the way they would do it is probably like Hall of Trials, right? Uh, but then when I talk to people about that, I'm like, that's going to be expensive, right? Nobody, we don't get nearly enough Hall of Trials currency to like get a unit, get the imprints, as well as keep up with EEs and for people who missed Violin or Crimson Seed or anything like that. I mean, I personally think Hall of Trials needs to have an overhaul in the in the first place, but um, I really liked Boyer's idea in having like that um like the quests and stuff like that to like build the character up um get the imprints things like that you know make it more for like you know maybe a mid-tier like bringing in some of the stuff that shuffles was saying you know um make it something that like a mid-tier player can do uh make the unit and a, one thing too that you could potentially do is um make it so that the like him have harder missions right so that like as you get late game you can then upgrade said character further so that way you are invested in this character over the long haul of your uh of your account i think that, that would be really interesting that would uh one of the big things i think that you know because when they were talking about mulgoras right uh and why we can't just like recall mulgoras or have a recall ticket they're like well we want you to be invested in your character uh what better way to have a free character that like maybe you get through connections and then you start doing more quests you level up their skills you unlock extra things would be a super phenomenal way to be very invested in your character and your account um what, i don't think that it'll happen but yeah go ahead shuffles what um it, did you ever play summoners where i don't mean I to didn't. jump yeah. no nope. oh, i did that's the that's where i got the idea from. i was, was thinking oh. like <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, the homunculi, they have this thing where like you can you get a unit and you can kind of pick their skills. So obviously that's probably off the table. But what if you had a choice between picking either Strays or Mercedes? And like you could kind of switch them based on what you wanted for your account. And like they both provide different things. Like maybe one's a strip and one's whatever. I don't know. Whatever the examples are. But kind of like you could still make it the same achievement based thing. Yeah. Um, but at the end of it you get to pick whichever is your favorite unit and you know you can maybe use like 
there's like a currency or whatever one of one of them 400 currencies we have we can use to like if you want to switch it to the other one you can switch it back or whatever so you're not tied to that unit for i mean but i would but, want both of them shuffles but they wouldn't allow that that's how it's gonna make it that would make you tied to it, right? <laughs> that would make the, the community split on who you pick oh yeah, I would, yeah. it would be team straws versus be, team think. team maru you would have like you'd have people be like oh you're team straws you're not allowed in this guild only <laughs> only arc demon mercedes reps are in this guild and if we ever find out that you paid that currency to change it instant kick just gone get out of here get out of here with that stuff uh that would be kind of interesting for sure i think that just making it so that you um you're more invested in said character as you go through i think would be a really good way to increase the longevity too uh you know of the game even if the character is not like the most busted thing you'll still have a lot of people that will do that just for like the achievement sake of things uh, same with like dagger sakar stuff right um so i think that that would be that would be really cool but we're going to move on to our last question uh before we go into open discussion and chat questions but this one's going to be rta related with the jp server blazing through content they are you know and it's weird because typically when we get gotcha games it's like after JP has gotten it and we're always the ones that are like in a rush to get caught up. But in the case of E7, the JP server are the ones that are, you know, blazing through everything. Do you think that when they get caught up that they will put them into the RTA pool? And what do you think the implement impl what do you think implications of them being like a year a year behind us in terms of Molagaras, in terms of time to farm gear, in terms of all of that stuff? Blair, go ahead. I pointed to the wrong side, but this side. Uh, so I think like I think about it. There's like new players coming in that came around the Japan server, and I know more than one player that has already gotten close to being legend, even though they started later than us. I definitely could see Japan server coming to our server, and I, I I could see it being really cool. But I feel like they would have to increase the top hundred bracket for Legend, especially for RTA, because I feel like that would just be super competitive to the point where it's like only a hundred player from all the different servers. Um, get pretty pretty rough. As far as the units, though, I could see like if they don't have all the units that we have by the time they get all the units, they would have to do the bands that they did for the GG collab. So I don't know how they would try to do that if they don't have all the units already released to them yeah well so I, I don't think that they would they would put them in the pool until like the units are one-to-one -one. and like recently they have been releasing the ml units um in in lockstep with us right so they get ml cigarette stuff like that and mystics um yeah. to get them to get them caught up um but yeah i, I think that like you said if they're uh increasing the amount of servers i mean it's already last season was pretty sweaty for top 100 yeah. anyways uh but yeah. shuffles uh what's your take on this um i actually had somebody in our discord yesterday the day before post that they started when they got euphine and they already hit legend uh they're in legend rta but granted it's free season but that just is like it shows that it can be done Mm -hmm. Obviously, they need all the units in there. I think they could compete right away. I, I think if they don't add them to RTA, they probably won't consider, continue playing. I think our our server in particular would have really suffered if RTA didn't come around. I think the game was starting to see a bit of a dip before that happened. And then we got a massive spike once RTA came. And now most players are focused on RTA. It's the main focus of all content creators. Well, most, almost all content creators. <laughs> and, yeah. like, at least it's something that provides more content instead of just, like, hey, I'm going to stream and I'm going to farm Wyvern. Like, that's not really all that fun to watch over a long stream anyway. Like, Shuffles, you get away are, you, are you calling me out for my 24-hour <laughs> A15 <different>. streams? <laughs> Man, I've done a 24-hour stream before, and I do not wish to do it again. I don't know how you do it so often. I give you the most respect for being able to pull that off. <laughs> it's like, hey, what but, are you doing today? 24 hours of A13. No, no, no. 
that's what we're doing. <laughs> so, John Stott. Right? You know, I don't mean that offensively. Oh, no, I, I know. I'm just messing with you, general. man. Yeah, no, you're you're completely right. Um, so, I, yeah. I do think they have to add that to Japan server. I think it's important. If you want the game to grow in other areas of the world, you've got to give them that content. Otherwise, why are they going to continue playing, right? They yeah. just quit and go join another server. Um, in terms of how, I think, like, once I, like I like was said, I think once they get all the units, why not? They can already, I'm sure they can already compete. They've got a lot of, a lot of Japanese server players are going to be putting a lot of money into the game. Yeah, they I mean, if, if Japan's of... known for anything, it is wailing on gacha games. So oh, I'm pretty yeah. sure that oh, even yeah. before Wyvern 13, they probably had some players with like, you know, 290 Bassars. Um, <laughs> Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'm actually kind of frightened of them putting the JP players into the pool because we're going to just get get hot dumpstered by the JP whales. But Vinny, what's your take? I think I think I'm going to echo a lot of what like everybody else already said. It's the fact that, you know, if they are going to join the RTA servers, they need to have uh, like they need to have access to every single unit that we do otherwise it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be fair play just because like you have units from the gg collab like dizzy who are i, I would say like critical mm -hmm. i think if you don't have dizzy you're at a huge disadvantage just not having the option to pick her right could you imagine yeah, going into like, a fight and someone picking dizzy and you've never even seen her before and don't know what she does <laughs> exactly because <laughs> you're from another you know what she does like <laughs> it's like you, you can't you can't compete if you don't know what Dizzy does, and Dizzy yeah. does a whole lot. Like yeah. you can, she can literally cripple you turn one. So, like they would need to have access to every single unit. But I think once they catch up unit wise, there's no doubt in my mind that JP players are going to be among the top top fifty players on like in Legend RTA, because that's the trend that's always been for majority of like the gacha games or JP players. It's like they invest the money, they invest the time, and there is always going to be someone in JP on any game that's going to be way better than you have ever imagined. You know, <laughs> that's just, yeah, and, that's just and, the and, way I've seen it, you know? And it's like, yeah, once they do have access to, like, all the cross-server RTA, um, like, access that we do, like, we start facing JP players, we're going to actually see some really, really interesting plays because I feel, and from what I've seen from some JP innovative, players... They're innovative, right? Yeah, they're very innovative, and their gear level, like, let's be real, like, JP probably has the largest population of whales. Yeah. You know, it's like, their gear level is not inferior to global EU Korea at all. Oh, yeah. They just they just need to be implemented, and they just, and once they do, it's, it's like, it's a whole other meta, I feel. Right. Also, right now, it's a bigger deal, but, like, two years from now, the gap, one year gap doesn't mean anything. Yeah. 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 No, so for sure. Over time, and, it'll get closer and closer. Yeah, and that's one of the things, too, like, uh, you know, that I've brought up before, like, players who have been playing, like, for a long time, um, you know, they are... And the other thing, too, is with the JP players having that, um, what we in the FGO world previously called Clairvoyance EX, where you know everything that's coming everybody has already tested said unit for an extended period of time oh, yeah. you know what to molagora you know what is oh, yeah. the meta character right so it's like hey this character comes out we have to put every single thing that we put it with you know we have to triple s this this is the most meta character that's ever going to come out right you know fcc drops in jp i'm sure that all of the whales have you know triple s fcc's plus 15 uh because you know she'll never not be meta for the most part um but it will it'll definitely be interesting um jp like you said has always been known for uh being the best 
at most games that they're in. Uh, I mean, Monster Hunter, my friend, camera guy Ryan shows me videos of like some Japanese dude, like beating stuff that takes like a whole raid of people. And I'm like, how did he do that? And he's just like, oh, he's Japanese. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> easy. So it will, it will be really interesting to see what they bring to the meta and how we as global, how the KR people, um, how each region kind of answers that right uh because i feel like uh global is kind of you know tanky bruiser i mean we've got our cleavers but kr is kind of known more for cleaving um so it'll be interesting to see like if there is like specific um prevalent metas in different regions uh that'll be interesting to kind of talk about in the future you know whenever all of that comes around but i am super excited to have that just so i can go well you know when we're allowed to leave the country so i can go to japan dressed as bandit keith and um challenge people to to rta to show them the power of america that is uh <laughs> that is my dream um but we're going to move on to open discussion which is uh just each one of you gets uh, to talk about something that is going on currently in the game that you uh, want to bring up and discuss. We'll start with you, King Blair. Yeah, so the big one, it's like what I've been doing a lot of has been the new RTA with the frenzy changes. Yeah. Um, I'm just kind of curious to see if, if you guys are having similar experiences where games like don't, like if you get to frenzy six, it's like something's wrong. Like there's yeah. something that happened halfway because it's just everyone's going like super aggro. I don't know if you guys are experiencing the same thing in RTA where it's like if you're getting to Frenzy Six, it's not probably not a, the best thing in the world. Like you probably like got unlucky because it's all over like in like a couple of turns. Yeah, and that's actually something that we were talking about. Uh, that's why we are currently um, living in Vinny's meta, and um, it's uh, very hyper aggressive because yeah, if you get to that Frenzy, any type of lockdown you're gonna get debuffed everything um yeah. it's it's real rough i know that both Vinny and shuffles like this new uh current frenzy meta because it is going to be a little bit faster so i mean i'm but definitely i definitely agree with you if you get to that frenzy level you yeah no it, it doesn't happen much anymore yeah shuffles same uh yeah i I mean, for the most part, there are fights where, you know, both people have sustained and it lasts a little bit longer. Um, I Speaking of Frenzy specifically, kind of, sort of off topic, but not really. They had a chance to fix, they, they realized something was wrong with Frenzy and they fixed it. But I think they, although that was a change that needed to be made, the fact that Frenzy still technically heals people. I think is something that needs to be addressed. I know it's not like quote unquote technically a heal, but like I face, for example, I was both my units were at full health against two other units in high frenzy. They were both at 10% health and I ended up losing the fight, even though they didn't have sustain because they healed all the way back to full due to frenzy. And it's not a heal, but when it procs and my net HP goes down and theirs continues to go up, I don't understand how they haven't decided to fix that yet. Like oh, how they go yeah, from 10% yeah, yeah. HP to 100% HP is a heal. I see what you Whether mean, yeah. it's a heal or not, it's still a heal. Like yeah. <laughs> they would have been dead if their percent HP hadn't continuously gone up the entire fight. And that's how it goes. I had I had sustain on my team and I lost, even though I was 100 percent to zero percent because they healed back to full and that's something that really bothers me hmm. uh, all right interesting it's also odd for crawl too. sorry for crawl too like it's like you ha you're a horse range and then it'll hit front scene it's like oh you're out of horse range because yeah he's back, back to full or CERN <laughs> goes back above her threshold again yeah um, or FCC with her shields heals back to full and you can't do any damage to her. Like there's a, yeah. there's a lot of those things that could easily be fixed. And I don't know. I feel like that, because that would prevent fights from getting to that point that you're talking about where you're like, oh, I'm in Frenzy 6 and things are weird now. 
Yeah, but that's partially because the friend, the heel part of it is, or not the, I don't know want to call it a hero because I know people get upset about that. <laughs> but right, it, it's still a heel. Like you went from ten percent to one hundred percent, you healed. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> anyway, that's what I would, I would yeah. work on. Fair. Yeah. No, I think the frenzy changes have definitely changed the way how a lot of people position their 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 kind of accounts. A lot of people regeared in light of the frenzy changes i think the frenzy changes aren't necessarily too too healthy for one reason only and it's the effectiveness increase yeah but, i mean if you think about it based on the formula alone like efres is already getting the short end of the stick and then you bring in frenzy and it's like by frenzy five you have an extra 100 percent. so now it's like i don't need to build effectiveness anymore and i shafted efres even more as a stat Right. So I think from like a balancing standpoint, something has to change. And whether or not that's frenzy or whether or not that's the actual Ephra's calculation, I don't know. But I think what makes frenzy so toxic right now is the fact that my RB will start pushing back your Ruel and keep her permanently locked down. And it's yes. like, should that really happen? I, I can't answer that, but I personally don't think it should. I think they, they could adjust it. They could reduce it to like half of what it is instead of being yeah. like 10% per level, make it 5% per level or something. Um, although I love seeing Ruel get dominated. So, <laughs> whoa, that, yo, hey, that you wording though. <laughs> that might get us more players, right? If that was a, if that was a thing. But, um, Ruel getting dominated? Yes. <laughs> I bet you it would. In, in some, in Poor some Ruel. spicy hand holding comic books. Um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I think that, um, the effectiveness changes are, are pretty crazy. Uh, I don't even have a lot of effectiveness on my Ravi, but like after a couple rounds into frenzy, I'm stunning everything. Like it's not even, right. she's a big yeah. one. Yeah. Feels nice though. Yeah. That's it feels nice they, to get those Ravi uh, How does she, how does she just get buffs every single time? Even when they're not trying to buff Ravi, they just buff Ravi. Like the frenzy changes were literally like, Hey, how can we make Ravi even stronger? We gave her more effectiveness. Uh, we gave her a stun on her S one. Uh, let's just make all of our TA's mechanics just benefit Ravi. She just keeps, just keeps winning. Um, but I the do one thing yeah, that 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 really like as much as we hate on the effectiveness part and the healing part the one thing i think that was really 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 needed was changing it from damage dealt increases over time to attack increases over oh time. yeah i, I, I think that was really agree. important and they should have done that from the beginning and that i am really grateful that they changed because that's changed yeah. the matter for the better that's made it damage dealers are good and like they yeah. don't suffer over time for because you brought damage so right. i think that's really yeah. nice. right and i agree with you and i think that like just having the damage increase over time uh was what made that like tanky bruiser meta the more like hey this character scales off of um hpc damage right so now it makes characters yeah. like um you know even a ravi to a point who does actually scale a bit with attack more so than like let's say like you know an alencia or something like that the scales pretty much predominantly off of hp and c damage you know it does increase their overall uh benefit versus you know the i'm just 350 c damage and 25k hp and like zero attack um so it's i nice do, to not be getting yeah. one shots by fcc anymore yeah <laughs> like yeah that no, too. Frenzy. <laughs> you know i mean unless it's one of those like <laughs> crazy high damage fccs which still still are rough but yeah yeah, no, I, I I definitely like it. Um but again, it did shift the way people geared things, right? Uh instead of like your two hundred effect resist Ruels now, people are going more towards like, hey, I'm just gonna put this into better other stats and just give her immunity, right? Because after a couple of turns, all of this F res doesn't matter at all. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be a much higher tempo, um, aggressive season, which I'm actually not too unhappy with. I I don't mind that type of play. Uh, I think but it's more entertaining. It is. Yeah. It is for sure. 
um yeah. if anything people complain like in my videos they're like hey this is why nobody watches your videos because it took you 35 minutes to finish this one fight and i'm like hey you know what uh, i still won right and they're like this i could have watched 17 cleave matches in the time that it took you to finish this one frenzy 20 and i'm like but i yeah. but i won right you know although it does feel bad when you spend 20 minutes and then you lose so oh, uh, yeah. oh <laughs> a little bit of a yeah. little of bit of column a little bit of column b um but i i will like it. i think uh a ross is going to be very very pivotal uh this season with his s2 double up um gonna be gonna be real strong but open discussion shuffles what do you want to uh what do you want to discuss um i guess since we already did the uh the frenzy part that's probably what i was going to say but if i i think the next thing that i if i was making adjustments would or concerns i guess would be the energy in the game i know it's been an issue for a long time i don't know if you guys still feel there's energy issues they've been doing a little bit better with giving us some more but like i would love to play the game outside of rta and just can't like I play can play for like an hour and then I have to turn the game off because I can't I have no sky stones, no leaps. Like unless yeah. you're heavy whaling, it's very expensive to play this game right now. Um, yeah, I I will agree with you. I mean, I obviously do whale quite a bit. Um uh, just a little bit. I buy a couple packs here and there. Um, but um I think that that's really though like where a lot of their monetization comes from um is the people grinding on the leaf packs they definitely have gotten a lot better than they used to be um but definitely like when there's a side story that's not a portrait side story and you have to grind that out you have to grind wyvern you have to grind and grind and grind and grind like they put in a new yeah. dungeon and i haven't even done stage one because I can't afford to do anything other than Wyvern. Like, I can only, right. I can barely do my dailies with the energy they give us, and then we're done. So, yeah. That would be my biggest thing is I would love to be able to farm a little bit because you need gear in this game. And it'd be, you can't it would be nice if gear. they had like a reasonably priced pack that gave you just more energy or like extra leaves per day. Like, don't make it, like, you yeah. know, crazy expensive, right? But another one of the, like, monthly pack uh, type deals where you just... It's the three yeah. runs per refresh. That too. Painful. Yeah, like, and I, I mean, really? I hate that Leafs don't fill all of your all of your stamina. Oh, dude, yeah. I hate that so much. Yeah. It's, it just looks odd, too. Just from, like, a... Design feels like you're getting ripped off every time you do it right yeah it's like I'm just getting 80 especially now with auto farm we're going through energy faster than ever yes um so with going through energy faster and no energy adjustments it kind of feels bad but yeah I don't and know. i think That's that, just my i think that like the the game is so centered around gear and farming that like you know uh kind of alleviating that it's not like um you know it's like if you gave people more energy all of a sudden everybody would have like the perfect gear and they would just quit the game right so i could it's see it's hard to tell to get it uh, yeah although yeah. they did say they're going to address like substats but i don't know what they're going to do with that it'll probably be what the one person said with summoners were where you can just re your really oh, substats i really uh, don't want them to please do, do not do that oh, yeah i <laughs> would not like I don't that like either it. honestly it's my thing like it's like it, but... like the idea of it is good but like coming from summoner's war where you could actually do that the optimization gets to like a different level like it's yeah. like you're talking like you can literally get all perfect speed rolls and then you're trying to compete against like 320 speed series and it's just like yeah no it takes min maxing to another level for sure yeah, right. It's I mean, just... my min maxing is already real bad. I have to like look at gear, and I'm like, oh, this piece of gear that like everybody else would think is super amazing had like one mid roll garbage. Yeah, but now imagine having three good substats and being able to swap out the bad one in exchange oh, for an extra yeah. HP percent. Like, uh, yeah, sounds... instead of like a flat attack, you have a 
HP percent there, and you can grind it as well, and so now you have a 15% attack percent instead of a dead flat stat or a dead res stat, like, yeah. whatever. That's It makes a huge difference once you do it over 300 pieces of gear. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. But I mean, I wouldn't mind it too much if it was like something, let's say, that dropped from Wyvern every so often. Uh, but you know, it would be it really well. It, it would be paid, and then everybody would complain about that. Mm-hmm. That would that was the problem in Summoner's War was right. the initial the initial paywall where people were able to. We won't go into the details, but yeah. able to buy unlimited packs on day one, and it screwed everybody else. But uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that would definitely, uh, definitely be. It was a, a pretty unquote, garbage accident. move. <laughs> yeah, yeah just, uh, not a fan of the optimate because, like, I don't know. I like with again with the energy. I personally don't see myself using that much energy, but I don't play as much as I know like other good players do. Like, most of the time, I'm just kind of like I log in, do my dailies, and then. Kind of do like a little labyrinth and then just RTA or arena. Yeah, so, I, so I, have... I don't stop playing, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> I could see like in those scenarios, but then with the optimization, I feel like it would just get so stressful. Like it's like I have to grind and I have to like see all these different things. And if I don't do it, they will. And then it's just like the gap just gets bigger. That is the other side to it is that if you allow something like that, it makes it less quote-unquote fun and more quote-unquote competitive so it depends on what direction they want to go as a game yeah yeah no for sure um vinny what was your thoughts on that i think i mean for me the big thing is really just the leafs i think i haven't come across in a lot of games a paid currency or like a premium currency that hasn't entirely refreshed your energy stock you know it's like a lot of energy-based games if you want to pay to refresh your energy, they do that entire bar. And I think E7 has kind of been a little bit stingy on it, just because if you think about it, you use Skystones, that's 60. And then you you use, what, Leaves, and that's 80. Yep. Well, if you're you're taking a look at your account, you're you're at rank 70, and your energy store is, what, 154? Uh, That's barely half. Right. And so, like, every time you're getting half or less than... And it's like, well, what am I really, like, what am I really getting from this currency? And it's like, you hit that barrier in your farming, in your playing, where it's like, at what point is it not worth it to even refresh anymore? Because late game, a lot of your gear is already optimized. So you're not, you don't necessarily need to farm. You just really have to regear. And that's what a lot of top players do. It's like, like getting to that late game stage is going to be difficult for a lot of players starting out because let's be real, we've invested the time, we've invested the energy that they're never going to get back and they can't even refresh for it. So I I feel like the energy thing is they just fix the leaves, maybe even like 100 or like 120, just a bigger proportion. That'd be nice. Yeah, well, I think, like, the thing, too, like, is even if it, even, like, if leaves refilled your whole stamina bar, like, you would have, obviously, people early on that would just, like, use them, right, to get caught up, but you would also have the people that maybe they want to optimize their account, maybe they want to uh, go the extra mile, they save all of their leaves and stuff like that to use them at a later point, and they get much more benefit out of that um i think that that would be the the way to go and you're right there's a lot of games that i've played where it's like if you refresh with whatever it is uh you either get like half of your bar or you get the whole bar right um and right. you're right when you refresh with like sky stones and you go oh this is an even three runs of wyvern 13 it's very feels bad um because yeah and the rate at which we get stamina back is so excruciatingly slow now i mean i know with like the web events and stuff like that you typically get back what you spent on everything um but even then you're just like at a net even right um and yeah. you have to farm so much in this game uh but i mean you also have people that will go on to various platforms and go hey look at the seventeen thousand energy that i have and then i'm like do you even play this game like and they're level 65 yeah yeah, yeah i'm like <laughs> bro like 
let's and yeah um the other thing is we're getting more units every yes. like every two weeks we get another unit yep. and if you can't get more gear like i i find i'm running out of gear like i want to gear more units i want to play with more units yeah but i can't afford to take it off. like i can't afford to take my lensia gear off to gear morty right so yeah. he's now on leftover gear and i i just it, it's gonna keep rolling and keep compounding to be worse and worse and worse unless we somehow find a way to get more gear yeah That's and one of the like, things that like people have brought up in the past is they're like well if they make it too easy to get more gear uh or farm more then you know people are just going to gear everything and then they're going to be you know bored or whatever and i'm like but i have 165 six stars um, I mean, I know I'm, I'm super, sorry, you have what? super weird, but um, <laughs> like I want to I want to gear a ton of different characters. Now, granted, I have a spreadsheet that helps me manage what I actually have geared so that I remember what I have geared, uh, even though I don't always remember what the right thing is to draft. But I mean, you have all these people uh, that, you know, want to gear units and just can't even though sometimes I do think that a lot of people are a little too picky on what gear they keep and what they just immediately think is dumpster worthy. But uh, that's a whole other, a whole other yeah. story. Um, but alleviating t- tuning some of the, uh, the um, energy stuff down a little bit wouldn't be too bad especially for your more mid-range player uh not only that but i think if like your mid-range players were getting more um more things you know being able to farm more getting more invested they would be more apt to potentially spend uh on the game it's kind of that uh you know well, some people cost spend fallacy on too I think if you had more energy, people would be more willing to spend on summons instead of yeah. having to spend on energy. Like, I haven't bought the Epic Pass ever. And, like, that feels bad. Like, I, yeah. they're putting out all these skins and they're putting out all these Epic Passes and we don't have the Sky Stones to be able to get them. Like, I've never even been able to get the first half of the Epic Pass because we get, that's how many Sky Stones we get from Arena for the week. Right. Am I going to not farm ever or am I going to get an Artifact Charm from the Epic Pass? Yeah. yeah yeah no definitely uh definitely like, I think understandable Smog is missing on a i think they're missing out on an opportunity i feel like if they made the energy better it could even incentivize more people to spend because i mean yeah. like the whales are going to get out all the packs anyways so like, right. like, if it starts becoming even more value whales are going to hop on that but then who you'd be catering to would be the people who are in between it's like I'm teetering on the edge of do I want to do I want to get a pack do I not want to get a pack is it worth it to get a pack and then yeah, well right if all now. of a sudden you make that system better you get those people who are on that edge yep what that reminds me of it's like with the the things that they do for the hunt events that they're releasing those leaf packs are like super good value I know people yeah that like don't burning passion right oh yeah. god burning passion packs I love it it just like like it's like it's so it's like it's such good value and it, it kind of goes with like what Vinny was saying that it's like I know people that don't usually spend that are like this is just so good why would I not spend on this and then yeah. they will buy that stuff so it's like exactly. you could see it if they made it better they could just make money. and they clearly are making good money for it because they keep putting them out oh yeah no for sure oh, i mean when they put those yeah. out during like hunt buffs and gold buffs and stuff like that i'm just like done every that's literally the first thing i do in the morning when i wake up i go like you know brush my teeth do my morning stuff buy my burning passion packs start on <laughs> start hitting wyvern whatever and i'm like okay cool uh thank you if you did this every day i probably would buy one every single day um you would also have probably the people the morning coffee uh, morning coffee like oh <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to drink this coffee. I'm going to buy my burning passion pack. And that is going to wake me up because I'm not going to get any good gear from this. I'm going to get really tilted kind of like, you know, if my coffee was not that great. Um, but um, yeah, no, I think that like overall, like shuffles was saying, trying to get caught up with more characters, things like that. Um, newer players coming in, are going to have an even harder time, right? So even if they just adjust it, uh, it will give people time to catch up. Not only that, but I think that like even the people who are playing right now, the Omega Whales, like it's 
really not going to make that much of a difference, right? Because I mean, I could just quit grinding right now. My account is pretty solid. Um, but I mean, I'm going to keep grinding for min max purposes, um, uh, on pretty much everything. So, you know, whales are still going to whale. Uh, I've mentioned it before. Like if they, if they, like made molas easier to get i'm not gonna stop buying molagora packs you know i would just move my money to other things i'm still going to put my money into the game you know i'm still going to refresh with skystone stuff like that so just making it easier for the mid-range player is overall going to just help more people out um but it's uh, the real root of the issue is is definitely how hard it is to get good gear right i mean i think that's the the root of everybody's everybody's issue at the end I of the day not know if i could farm to get it right yeah. and I, the, also the things like you also have to farm the catalyst i i don't know if it's just me but i hate catalyst farming it's just yeah, god the catalyst just, and I think the catalyst really packs are like my favorite thing ever when they announce those and they're like it's like 10 bucks and you get to pick 15 catalysts i'm like that is less than i would spend on leafs to get that many catalysts most likely yeah. just doing this through energy i'm like this is this is great value for me i can use that for i think for someone other calculated things. it like in terms of mon like money to value and time, considering the catalyst rates, the catalyst pack is probably one of the most value packs oh, yeah. for someone to get. Yeah, I, I buy the it energy every time. you would spend is much higher money oh, yeah. wise for than sure. it would be to buy it. So yeah. fun facts. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And the other thing too is like you buy the catalyst, you don't have to farm them, and then you just go oh. back to Wyvern thirteen. Yeah, you know that's. that's because I, I hate having to farm it and just like, like Shuffle said with the energy, it just feels like I have to farm and if I'm not farming, I have to farm Catalyst for a new unit. I just don't want to build yeah. new units half the time. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. And, um, you know, uh, yeah. So there's definitely things that they can do, especially if they've got their, you know, their 10 year plan. I do like that, you know, you get Catalyst out of this uh, side story um but again with them putting out a new unit every two weeks it is very very hard to uh to catch up on things um i honestly would be perfectly fine if they slowed down a bit but the other nice thing with them uh the anti-power creep right um this will be my open uh discussion topic here is the fact that they don't really power creep themselves so unless you're like a content creator uh you don't necessarily have to roll for everything new because uh you don't have to roll for more because you already have valencia um there's not a... just triggered a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of people who really want alencia i can imagine your chat exploding right now uh, yeah, probably. Really? you know because I they listen that... to they listen to other people when alencia first came out and were like uh oh, alencia's garbage she doesn't s1 s2 off of her off of her counter attack why not just use charles instead and then they didn't roll for her uh um, she would be so busted do you imagine how broken she would be if she yeah. was i remember when she came out and i'm like yo if she does this off a counter attack they just invalidated all of charles like this is the most amazing thing ever and then like they came out and because of the mistranslation everybody's like this unit is garbage and i'm like okay yeah. uh it, all right then and i got her and i got imprints of her and i'm like she is so good so good i love alencia but um the nice thing is is that a lot of the units that come out people will complain about this all of the time all of the time they're like this unit's not ssb power level this unit's not rb power level i would much rather have more tools to do a different job or the same job or you know let's say i don't have valencia i can pull for more or i can pull for shoe or i can pull for this other unit that kind of does what Alencia does for the time being, right? Um, I've always been a big proponent that the more tools I have in my toolbox, the better. Maybe, you know, it's not an Arby, but 
what do you do if Arby's banned? What do you do if they pick your Arby? What if you don't want to, you know, Mulgora Arby? Um, you have this other unit that can do that job similar. Is it as overpowered? No, because reasons, but it fills a niche. And I think that that is a very good aspect of the game that makes it so you don't always have to pull the newest unit unless you're a collector, unless you're a content creator trying to get that $6.52 ad revenue off of YouTube. And then you have to go, all right, guys, this video is three minutes long. We need to talk for seven minutes. But uh, King Blair, what are your opinions on the new units not being direct superpower creep? I personally like it to an extent because like it makes it it makes it nice because i like the idea of, of having units to counter other units rather than just having like another rb but it's just like like when emil Kraw came out it was just like the whole meta got shifted when he came out versus now it's like okay it's a good ad to do different things and it just adds a different layer to the game for people that may not have the other unit it's another good option but i i personally like it i don't think we need like more like overpowered meta breaking units anytime soon cool shuffle I'm, I'm a fan yeah same uh i not every unit has to be a good unit right like you have to have a worst unit in the game there's no way around that you're yeah. always gonna have a worst unit in the game if you buff the worst unit there's gonna be a different worst unit so yeah. like live with it you can't just because you happen to like the design of a certain character doesn't mean it's gonna be the best unit in the game there's a million units the art team is fantastic mm -hmm. like they have one of the best art teams in any game, in my opinion. Yeah. And like, that's just the way it's going to be. The fact if you, if Reddit got what they wanted and every unit that was bad got buffed, <laughs> it would be so power creeped that nobody would be able to keep up and the game would die. So yeah. I think I do agree with the way that they're doing that. I don't mind units not being overpowered. And I think they're trying to be careful about it because of, past mistakes they made when they did release overpowered units and i just want them to take to nerf them. i want them to take 100 percent blind off of arby i don't understand ignore why he has it blind. and two turn two turn two turn blind why why does he need that and push yeah. back on his s1 why and yeah. s3 every single turn every, and then they nerfed ridiculous. him but it was an indirect buff because basket yeah <laughs> they actually made him stronger gab gab <laughs> gaming 40 percent chance to win uh vinny what's your take on it no i 100 percent agree like i think the way that the way that they've been releasing units is really really nice because they're making them balance to the point where it's like oh this isn't a must pull you know, yep. it's like, if I want that in my roster, I'll pull for it. But if I don't need it, or if I have something similar, mm -hmm. then I can afford to skip it. Now, this this obviously doesn't apply to, like, collectors, like you said, but there is a way to be very, very free-to-play friendly to play E7. It's really just being cognizant that you don't need every unit. You just need units to fulfill certain roles. Yeah, And having that mindset helps a lot of people be successful as free-to-plays. The only thing that I would say is really their buffs and their and their adjustments i feel like the way smallgate goes goes about adjusting their units that needs to be improved because i don't know man sometimes <laughs> they're <laughs> i'm just gonna say this straight up sometimes their buffs take a hero from zero to like 100 yeah meaning so, well, sometimes so a their big issue is a zero. they're buffing all three skills every time <laughs> You don't have to buff yeah. all three skills. You can buff just one skill and consider it a buff. You don't have to buff all three. Like, yeah, why like... Why did they think a double attack and unbuffable on Cerise's, you know, S1, S2 was needed? They could have just okay. literally kept the, uh, they could have just gave her Oath Key on the S3. Perfect. She was good as it was. I don't even know why they buffed her in the first place. But yeah, no, I completely agree with you, Vinny. I've I've actually literally uh, mentioned this to uh, to certain CMs. I'm like, you know, it would maybe, may just maybe, when you guys are <laughs> thinking about buffs, run that past you know high level, high tier players, but to kind of throw that out there because I remember like. You know, when they first brought out Cerise, right, with her old stuff where you could still push back with Restrict, I was like, this is going to be the right. most toxic thing ever. You put Cerise and you put Dizzy in the same team, and they never take a turn, ever. And you 100%. Sorry for good measure. Yeah. 
bizarre for good measure. They literally take no turn, exclamation point, control. Uh, have fun getting your PhD. I was like, if they release this like this, this is going to be the most broken thing that is ever going to go into this game. Uh, when they put out original champ Zerato uh, with his ER of resisting uh, S1, I was like, who who approved this? Like, what what person was like this? This is fine. Uh, this guy can literally solo all PVE content and is going to just, you know, slap a slap defense break onto a 300 ER Ruel. That's perfectly, perfectly fine. Um, so, yeah, I've mentioned to them before that maybe having like a team or, you know, of people you could reach out to and just go, eh, hey, you signed an NDA, but what do you think about this? Uh, don't tell anyone this is what we're going to do. Um, and you could have <laughs> players who are, you know, pretty well versed at the game go, uh, yeah, if you put that out, I'm going to abuse the living crap out of that. Like, there's no way I am actually, you know what, this is a perfectly fine change. You should put this in uh, because I'm already building this unit. This I'm going to dumpster absolutely everybody. Uh, but um uh, yeah. at least they finally buffed politica right we all know how much she needed a buff politica absolutely I... needed a buff <laughs> oh, absolutely uh, <laughs> definitely absolutely there are a lot of units that got buffs um that i just think i'm like why did lqc need splash damage on her s3 i don't I mean, even oh, if they yeah. just gave her that, why did they need to increase the damage on her S1 as well? Her S1 chunks like super hard now. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't know what their what their buff design process is, but sometimes yes. it just blows my mind. I thought the Robbie Stone was weird too, because right before the buff, she was already like, yeah, pretty good. They keep buffing pretty... things that are already being used. Did you notice yeah. that? Like they, yeah. Lydica was like gaining in popularity. They buffed her. LQC was being used. They gained, they buffed her. Ravi was gaining popularity really fast. And then the frenzy changes and they buffed her. Like yeah, it's like they they are like, hey, we should make people realize this. But the people have already realized it, and at high levels, they've already converted to like starting to use them. You just had to give it time, and they would have become meta on their own. Right. Right. Um, you know what? Who I think needs buffs is uh, Fire Charlotte and Fire Tenny. Uh, they could use some more buffs, and maybe <laughs> Melissa. Actually, we could probably get Melissa a buff because New will make that happen. We'll just be like, you know who who still doesn't get played ever? Uh, Melissa, just give her just give her another buff. Um, just give her give her uh, two hits on her S one like top model Luica. Then she'll be then she'll be meta. Um, Maybe, maybe. Dude, I'm waiting for Fire Haste to get buffed. It's never well, gonna happen. Are yeah, I think it's a... Okay, so I thought for the two university they said that both units that weren't used, but people actually use Haste in like PE oh, content. I'm wondering if that's why they're like doing that because they're like <laughs> clearly he's being used for PE. So do we really need to buff Haste? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. It's like we they're referring to, to stuff from two stop years using before Haste. Yeah. Like, haste is still used for wyvern 10 what do you mean it's, it's, it's true oh true though um but we have been talking for uh about an hour and a half here um so uh, we're not going to ask ch chat questions uh sorry chat we talk too much uh <laughs> we're so uh we're done we're done talking to you like car six says uh your opinions don't matter i didn't say that car six said that somebody can link the <laughs> clip down below i i every one of your opinions matter to me uh but i also need to go get dinner uh so uh where can people find you king blair after this other than all of the links down in the description uh take us out so you can find me in YouTube. Uh, I try to stream Tuesday, Thursdays, sometimes Saturdays. And yeah, just I just chill on YouTube. Just go to look up King Blair and you'll probably find me there. So, yeah. Cool. And in my tournaments sometimes. Uh, Shuffles, <laughs> go ahead. Tell people where they can find you again. And, uh, you know, anything you want to say before we end? Uh, 
just for the most part Twitch, although I do put out YouTube videos occasionally, um every pretty much every single day from God, what's the Eastern time? Seven thirty Eastern onward. And yeah, that's about it. Cool. And Vinny, where can people find you? Yo, uh find me in my Discord. Invasion. We're recruiting. <laughs> so uh you know, uh random plug, uh Invasion's recruiting, but also like Hit me up on Discord, Vinny, hashtag 1006. I'm always open. I also Crap, heard that <laughs> um, I also heard that Scuff Town's recruiting, Deviance is recruiting, Fleet is recruiting, but you got to talk to Lazy about the Fleet recruitment. Um, that's what I've just, that's just what I've been told. Um, and Kilo408 is recruiting for the Simp Nation Um so hit him up for that uh but everybody's information will be down below in the description as obviously uh you already know where to find me because uh, you're watching this youtube video or you're watching it live on every other thursday at 8 30 ish eastern um so I guess I really don't have to tell you where to find me, but I will tell you that you should hit the subscribe button and uh, smash the bell notification. Follow me on all of my social medias and sign up to Vinny's OnlyFans, which we will also have linked down below. Yeah, link now, down okay, below. Link ASMR down below. Content. ASMR content. And now I got to find another like ASMR level voice for the next podcast. All of the non content creators I get have like these amazing voices. Uh, Airwest still has to get his ASMR channel up, but I will catch you guys on the next one. Take it easy, homies. Peace.